Hey there, kids. Now, 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 don't you cry. Juan just had to go on a little errand so he won't be joining us today. Instead, you get me. My name is Juan the Scarecrow. Yes, my name's Juan too. Pretty common name around these parts. What? No, I didn't do anything to Juan. Why do you say that? I didn't turn his head into a pumpkin while he was asleep and made him die a slow and agonizing death. Why? <laughs> who, who told you that? Anyway, don't y'all be standing there with your long faces. I got just the thing that'll make y'all squeal with joy. As you all know, Halloween is approaching faster than ever. And with the good old spooky festivities just around the corner, I've been preparing a special harvest that is sure to satisfy your hunger for a scary good time. You see, I am the scarecrow that guards Black Acre Ranch, where the soil is bitter and nothing grows. Except, of course, for the pumpkins that sprout like pimples and boils out of the earth as soon as October comes around. This year especially, the crops have been especially restless, oozing with evil magic and murderous intent, just waiting to jump right out of the ground and into your bookshelves. I got three very special Halloween-themed wreaths to review, three grotesque little pumpkins that have been growing with extra care, watering them with the blood of the innocent every day and making sure the maggots and vermin lay their eggs into every crevice. You are sure to like what I've got for you, and if you don't, well, it's too late. You're already here, and you're gonna be plagued by these visions, whether you like it or not. <laughs> All right. The first wretched little pumpkin I've got for you is Once Upon a Halloween by Richard Lehman, first published in the year 2000. Now, this is not the first time that Lehman makes himself known around these parts, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last. Now, what have I got to say about Richard Lehman over here? Richard Lehman is a writer that really has forged his own style. He just flows freely into the page. He's not really concerned with a lot of florid writing. He's not really concerned with putting too much detail into anything. The action is just fast. The dialogue is just beat by beat. And everything that he writes, to quote Dean Koontz, is sure to make you have a good time for good or bad reasons, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, once upon a Halloween is one of his many Halloween themed reads or October in general if you want to look at it that way. Bizarrely enough as I was looking into this book I found out that he wrote another Halloween themed read called The Halloween Mouse and that was a children's picture book. So if you want your kids to get started on Richard Lehman early be sure to pick that one up. 
I can't say I was much more impressed by this as with Flesh, which was previously reviewed here on this channel, but I can't say I was any more disappointed either. Once you read one Richard Lehman book, you pretty much know what you're in for, and his style is very consistent. Let's just go ahead and say that. This story in particular is set on a Halloween night, and it follows this a pair of female roommates who are giving out candy to trick-or-treaters when a young teenage boy barges into their home and he says you gotta you gotta let me in you can't open the door there's somebody following me and they're gonna get in and they're gonna kill us the girls of course are skeptical whether he's telling the truth or he's just some creep trying to break into their home but yes soon enough this creepy cult made up of naked people burst into their home and they start attacking them and they want to take them back into the cemetery so that they can perform human sacrifices and I mentioned that they're naked and for Richard Lehman I think that that is very important a detail to mention. I think Juan himself let you know when he reviewed Flesh that there's just a lot of jiggling in those books and this is no different. There are just weird insertions of sexual tension and sexual advances throughout. That is just a given for Layman. You can take it or you can leave it and I'm sure most people are just gonna leave it. But there is some charm in there. I think that he really is this author who writes the written version of a cheesy, sleazy, pulpy 80s horror movie. And yet that comparison to visual media doesn't really do it all that much justice because I do believe that his stories are something that can only exist on the page in the written word. It's something about that style I mentioned earlier, how everything is just so frivolous, so straightforward, so devoid of any style, and yet that is a style in and of itself. It's something you really gotta read to believe. Now the story takes a lot of turns a lot of turns and I imagine from a writer's point of view Richard Lehman must have really been struggling to throw something together here and I guess the figure let's just throw everything in and see what sticks and some things do stick but some things just kind of flounder and other things just don't make any sense there's even an edge of the supernatural that is introduced in here I'm not gonna say what it is specifically to avoid spoilers but it is there and it just kind of contrasts against what I thought was going to be this high octane Halloween themed crime murder thriller, but then we get ghosts in there and that's cool, I guess. Yeah, not a lot in here makes sense in terms of uh, reality, of course, barring the supernatural elements. A lot of the characters act very erratically. There's even very, very laughable moments in here where uh, these characters are about to die, they're about to get murdered, but then they stop to stare at a naked woman's body, or they stop to consider the sexual advances from a psychopath and wonder, well, I'm about to die, should I just get laid while I'm at it? That happens a lot. And I gotta say, it's something that was touched upon in this channel before. Richard Lehman might, at surface level, seem like someone who is really trying to be misogynistic or someone who is really trying to portray women as brainless and he does do that but I have to say not exactly in his defense Richard Lehman's not the hill that I'm gonna die on but he doesn't just characterize women like that he characterizes everybody like that. The men in this book are equally stupid and uh, sexually fueled and, and there's as much lingering on their body as there is on the female body. So make of that what you will. I think that more so than trying to be misogynistic, Richard Lehman might just be trying to construct his own super horny cinematic universe. And I guess he succeeded. It was very strange. There were a lot of things that just came out of left field. And the overall story doesn't feel all that cohesive, but once you start to think a little more about it, uh, does that even matter? It's a great time to read this. It's 250 pages, I just flew through it. It was unbelievable how entertaining everything was, how the outrageous and unbelievable turns in the plot, the twists and turns, they're there. And if you're someone who is constantly trying to find logic into every single little step that the story takes, 
100% this is not going to be for you. However, if you are willing to just let the pros wash over you, if you're in it for a good time, just the way that you would watch a shitty 80s movie, just kind of play it maybe in the background, you have to kind of get into the mindset of having all your thoughts in the background of your brain and you just kind of flow through it and see where it goes. That's the kind of mindset you really have to operate on whenever you read Richard Lehman. That's what I'm starting to find. Uh, but when you get into the mindset, and believe me, for me, it took a little bit. But once I got there, I thought, you know what? This isn't that bad of a time. It's entertaining and it reads very fast. There's no time lost. There's really nothing lost. There's nothing gained, but there's nothing lost. <laughs> so I guess overall, I rated this book 2.5 stars out of five, definitely closer to a three. And I'm telling you, if you're a horror fan, if you're a layman fan, there is more of all that he is known for in here. And I gotta say, it is very Halloween themed. There is a lot of trick or treating. There's a lot of pumpkins. There's a lot of this and that, that really gives it that holiday spirit. So is it an appropriate holiday read for October? I will say 100% yes absolutely and also here's another thing that i was thinking the more i read through this i've heard the term cozy horror be thrown around here on booktube by certain booktubers who use it to describe primarily somebody like darcy coates it's a kind of not necessarily uneventful but just unimpactful kind of horror it's not something that's going to be life-changing it's not going to turn your brain around every which way but you just kind of enjoy it you kind of cozy up and have a good time reading whatever it is it's not going to demand a lot out of you i gotta say richard layman might be the splatterpunk cozy horror author it, his books really have that kind of feel good vibe to them if you're into that kind of exploitation if you're into that kind of extremity if you are into that kind of angle of pulp and cheese this is as cozy as it gets. It doesn't demand anything out of you and you are going to have a fantastic time. So if you want to check this out, if you've read Richard Lehman, if you're rearing up for the spooky festivities this year or any of the other years to come, or if you're someone like me for who Halloween is every single day, definitely check this out, but don't expect, well, anything. <laughs> All the same, I thought it was great. 2.5 might seem harsh, but I think most of Layman's bibliography lives around that middle. I'm still trying to find something by him that's going to wow me. I'm sure I'll find it somewhere along the line. But for now, I will say I don't regret reading this. I had a great time. Even the questionable moments uh, ring with some kind of entertainment aspect of it. If anything, they invite laughter with the book and at the book. You can laugh at Richard Lehman and his shitty writing, and I'm sure he would 100% be okay with that. All right, up next for this year's harvest, we have a dirty, dirty little pumpkin that was actually grown by someone who also resides around these corners of spooky booktube. The next book I'm going to talk about is Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney, first published in the year 2019. Cameron Chaney, as I said, is a booktuber, but first and foremost, he is an author. He's been working very hard for the next installment in this series, but for now, we have Autumn Crow right here. Autumn Crow is a collection of short stories that all take place in the town of Autumn Crow, a small and mysterious town where every day is Halloween. Well, not literally, but the Halloween spooky vibe sort of oozes and permeates everything around this town. And there's more than a handful of mysterious, horrific, and unexplained events. There are eight stories within this collection altogether. And I have to say, there was something in every single one that I enjoyed. But of course, I enjoyed some more than others. First, I think to open up this discussion, let's touch on the concept of nostalgia, which is something that this book seems to live right in the middle of. Nostalgia is this weird, weird feeling. 
It is a feeling of longing. It provokes a little bit of happiness, but it also provokes a little bit of sadness and even a little bit of frustration, anger, regret. A lot of heavy emotions go into it. And some are positive, but some are, are definitely negative and some might be downright sinister. The concept of nostalgia is explored here, I believe, thoroughly and magnificently. Every story is written through this strange angle that you wouldn't expect from a collection like this. As Cameron himself has explained it, this is a short story collection for adults, but the way that it is written suggests that it is addressing a certain part of our adulthood that feels ostracized, ignored, or oftentimes vulnerable. The short story collection, the best way in which I can describe it, it is that it is written in the same tone as a grown-up would use when explaining death to a child. That is what we have here. There are certain moments of violence or macabre or horrific subject matter that are nonetheless addressed sensibly and with that kind of childlike approach, but it's not necessarily childish or juvenile either. I think Autumn Crow is something that is best experienced uh, from person to person. Some people are sure to not really gel with a lot of the stories here. Some people are sure to absolutely delight in them, depending on which kind of psychology you are going into. And although most of the horror here might seem a little frivolous, might seem a little surface level, there is indeed a lot of psychological exploration that goes on between these stories. I think my favorite stories out of this collection were actually Frost and Saving Face. Those two stories I found to be rather momentous in the kind of emotional baggage that they carried with them, while at the same time not forgetting to include those spooky vibes and those horrific turns of events. It is something that really balances horror and poignancy and emotional significance very, very expertly, and that is what I appreciated about it the most. And I think the most fascinating aspect of this short story collection, like I hinted at earlier, is that everything depends on the reader and their mentality and I would say even their age. I would definitely say that this would work for younger readers at a certain level to be spooked by the grotesque and macabre imagery and the daring events that unfold and, and the creepy ghosts and the witchy vibes. But for an adult while reading it, they might certainly still enjoy those aspects, but there's a little something more that is offered in there as well. There's something to be said about the relationships between parents and children, the relationships between siblings that feel reflective and introspective. There's a lot of implications, a lot of subtext that one might only be able to pick up once they've been more exposed to the ills of the world. And I think that is what's most magnificent about the short story collection, is that there are certain stories that seem surface level creepy, nothing too out of the box, kind of run of the mill at times, but the more one thinks about it, the more one thinks about the characters, what they have experienced, what is said and what is left unsaid, there seems to be an underbelly, a brooding darkness, a brooding sinister thoughts that is just waiting to jump out. And I thought that that kind of allegory worked well with the concept of Autumn Crow in general. Autumn Crow seems to be this kind of dedication to small town Americana, this squeaky clean sort of innocent America that is perfect, that small town vibe that feels welcoming and cheery and just nostalgic as hell, but for all the good reasons, we would all love to go back to those glory days where everything was simpler, where everything was more joyous. However, the things that go on in Autumn Crow are not as innocent as they might seem. There are implications of child abuse, of murder. So the way that Autumn Crow is presented as this joyous town with a monstrous undercurrent lurking beneath the surface is the same way that one can approach the stories. So definitely there's a lot of interesting threads of thought. There's a lot of interesting thematic elements to it. I thought uh, specifically the short story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Feed, uh, which is the longest story in the collection, is the one that worked for me the last, simply because there seemed to be a lot of characterizations that felt 
abandoned. I felt like towards the end there was a lot that I would have liked explored uh, that still remained unsaid and there was and it seemed that that balance between uh, joyous gleeful uh, creepy scares and and that uh, momentous emotional heft uh, seemed to be lacking in that story specifically and it seemed like on one hand it was trying to be this uh, sort of uh, 50s creature feature homage there's even uh, mentioning of a quote from creep show you know meteor shit that kind of stuff but there was also a lot of adolescent psychology being explored and it was that part that didn't mesh well with the other part it was either you would have this creature feature or you would have this exploration of interpersonal relationships between teenagers uh, the two never seemed to quite meld together quite as i would have liked but that might just be up to personal preference all the same when there's a poignance when there's emotional vitality and when there's also a balance of that with horrific imagery and when there's subtlety when there's implication that sort of festers in the mind those are the kinds of horror works that really are successful in my eyes and for that i gave autumn crow four stars out of five like i said it is a book that seems to work for any reader but it's going to work on very very different terms so definitely pick it up if you dare And now for the final, a most beautiful, a most sinister, and most horrific crop of this year, we have Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge, first published in 2006. Now by the lean length, you might be fooled into thinking that this is some kind of throwaway Halloween themed horror novella. And indeed, that is what I first thought when I picked it up. However, little would I know that this would turn out to be one of the few five-star reads that I've had for this year. Also, I just realized that I've been speaking about myself and Juan interchangeably, even though at the beginning of this video, I established that we were two different characters. Fuck. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Juan, the Scarecrow. Ooh, anyway, <laughs> Dark Harvest is a story that works on a lot of levels. And you all know I love me some levels. First, we have this kind of uh, strange introduction of a narrative that is being told on the second person. The narrator is addressing you. And they refer to you as if you were a member of the small town in which the story takes place. This small town has a weird tradition in which every day a jack-o'-lantern is breathed life into and it turns into the October Boy. And the October Boy then runs around this supernatural eldritch creature with a pumpkin for a head. And if you wound it, it bleeds candy out. So that's pretty fucking cool. So as the tradition goes, the October boy runs around and all of the teenagers ages 16 to 18 in the town who are starved for an entire week prior to the celebration are then unleashed into the night. And whoever is successful in killing the October boy will be crowned the champion of the year. And what kind of reward does he receive? What does his future hold? Well, those are twists and turns that I'm going to allow you to experience for yourself for of course i highly highly recommend you pick this one up and now our main character here is pete mccormick one of the teenage boys an unassuming seemingly very physically weak boy who nonetheless is going to try his best at killing the october boy or will he well I can't say too much about it. Again, it's such a short novel. I can't go too much into detail without spoiling it, but I can talk about some of the themes that I found quite, quite compelling in here. It seems to work, one, as an oral story, like I said, is being told to you. It's kind of taste of fable. It's kind of taste of campfire tale. And I think that those threats and the kind of baggage that comes from narratives of those kind really works to shed some light into what Norman Partridge might have been attempted when he released this. What I found most beautiful about this little novel is that the characterization and prose are so, so, so rich. It goes from 
a straightforward story, like I said, sort of mimicking oral storytelling, not a lot of detail, action moving forward at a quick pace, but then we linger on certain details, we linger on certain descriptions that are so exquisite, that are so autumnal in theme, and there's a theming throughout the entire thing that is just absolutely flawless, absolutely incredible and beautiful, and the theming follows through to the characters. You have the geek, you have the jock, you have the hard-ass cop, you have the evil parents, you have the tomboy girl, etc, etc. But all of these characters feel fully fleshed out even if they seem to be stereotypical and they have certain mannerisms to them, they have certain things that they afford to the narrative that the, you wouldn't see coming at first glimpse. It is something that flows so beautifully while still staying in theme, while still managing to deliver the scares and the horror and the twists and the high octane thrills. It is just absolutely amazing. It's something that completely blew me away just in how in touch it was with tradition. Again, Halloween figures prominently into it and October autumnal celebration is at the heart of it and there is certainly a lot that seems uh, run-of-the-mill and stereotypical for a story like that but it sort of jumps beyond that it jumps beyond that kind of uh, surface level celebration and explores the psychological and socio-political undercurrents that go into such traditions. It explores the concept of tradition itself and who upholds it and for what reason and what kind of violence, what kind of monstrosity goes into those traditions. And again, also it is highly concerned with youth. And I think it also works allegorically in a lot of ways. Is this a story about war? Is this a story about drafting? Is this a story about innocence lost? Is this a story about intergenerational violence? Is this a story about social and racial tensions? There's just so much that can sprout out of here. No pun intended. Actually, pun absolutely intended. It was just magnificent. I jumped into it knowing nothing about it, and I think that's the best way to go about it, but I think I've told you just enough so that you can still enjoy all of the surprises that are in store for you here. Beautiful, beautifully written work with such amazing prose, such amazing rhythm, such amazing unforgettable characters, and the imagery, the violence, the monstrosity, the eldritch nightmares that await you here are beyond belief so, so immaculately crafted. It. absolutely five stars so far it is the greatest october slash halloween slash autumnal theme read that i have ever ever read and i hope to discover more and more like it for this i feel is the best balance between exploring tradition and also reveling in it and what else can i say pick this one up it should be part of every single bookshelf looking for those special october horror reads and that's my children is the beautiful harvest that i had prepared for you today let me know in the comments if you have read any of these or if you plan to pick any of them up and like i said juan might be out of commission for a while but i'm sure he knows you're all thinking of him and you still have me what's that do you hear that that's a crow. I'm gonna get that fucker.